All right, I'm really excited today to be with Suzanne Kohlberg, and we're gonna be talking about the mindset for healthy weight loss. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, George, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited because I know a lot of us, uh, well, probably most of us watching this can stand to be more fit, and uh, we know that it is not uh, about, um, you know, things that are outside of us. It's usually things that are within us, our mindset, our emotions that allow us to make better choices. So I'm really looking forward to, to our conversation. I want to be sure to first share with people what your bio is, and then we'll kind of get into so people can know your, your background. All right. So many of us desire lifelong changes to the way we eat and move, but we tend to cycle through patterns of dieting and binging. Suzanne has overcome the cycle. She personally went from being super obese at, and you know, these are her words, super obese at 150 kilograms, which is 300, what was it? 330 pounds. Oh, amazing. So 330 pounds to releasing something like 171 pounds, which is 78 kilograms or yep. yeah. So <laughs> that is, and it did it over three years. So it's a really healthy time span. It's not one of those you know, kind of yo-yo situations. Um, Suzanne's great passion is helping people escape the cycle by understanding that it isn't about looking for the external thing, but consistently taking imperfect action. I love that so much. Suzanne knows that no single approach is right for everyone. So she is trained in a range of modalities, including neurolinguistic programming, which is NLP. I think some of you have heard of this energy medicine, personal training, and Suzanne's uh, educational background includes a Bachelor of Medical Science. Uh, so Suzanne, thank you so much for having this conversation. I'm looking forward to learning some things too. Thank you, George. <laughs> so uh, I, I know, I understand that you have actually some slides you wanted to share with us. I don't know if you want to do that first or- Yeah, totally. Wanna, yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll lead with that. I'll share that now. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Oh, just a minute, show all window. There we go. Cool. Make that big. Yes. Just give it a second. There we go. Okay, all right. so yes. you've, you've kind of done my bio, but I just wanted to do a quick um, explanation, especially you said done it sustainably, not quickly. I have yes. done that before. <laughs> yes, yes. So my parents, um, with the best intention, put me on my first diet age four to fit in a flower girl dress wow. for my sister's wedding and wow. it kind of went up and down from there so i have lost and regained in excess of 500 kilograms in my life wow. um in in 2006-7 i lost 43 kilos only to gain it all back and mm. more and in 2011-12 i lost 60 kilos only to gain it all back mm. and interest so these pictures the dates are correct up uh, down, up, down. Wow. And then from 2015 through 2018, I released 78 kilograms. And there's a, a really subtle shift in my language there that's really important. It's that if you just close your eyes for a moment and think about anything that you lose, your keys, your wallet, your kids, you know, whatever, you're like, you've got this almost frenetic, I need to find it, you know? And when it comes to weight, we know consciously we want to lose it, we want to weigh less, but our subconscious doesn't differentiate that. So this subtle shift to released, and that, that language might not work for everybody, but shifted, um, uh, removed, thanks for service, whatever, was really, really powerful. And it's really powerful with my clients. So yes. um, I just, I always mention that. Mm. So basically, this is the kind of people that I work with. So if, if you fall into one or all of these categories, then you'll probably find benefit from this um, presentation. Um, people who have tried so many times before. And they're always looking for the next thing, you know, the one that will fix me. <laughs> and they think they lack willpower or motivation. I could do a whole presentation just on that because the fact mm. that you keep showing up means you have amazing willpower and motivation, but you don't feel it. And I get it. And you feel like a fraud because you know what to do. You just don't do it. Like right. people often could write a diet book themselves. They have all the knowledge, but it doesn't mean that they can implement it. And that's where the frustration comes from. Yeah. So I've developed this 
thing, <laughs> model, um, called the struggle cycle. So most people are here. They're like, okay, I'm carrying extra weight, whether it be a little amount or a big amount, it doesn't matter. It's, it's excess. Right. What can fix me? So I go looking at, and I don't want to like name all the diets because they're liable, but I've tried all of them. And then you come across something and you're like, yes, found the solution. You know, right. it's going to be this. And then you're like, let's do it. And you start with gusto. You clean out your pantry, you tell all your friends and family, or maybe not because they may be sick of hearing it from you. Mm. Um, you print off all the stuff, you buy all the weird and wonderful ingredients that you have to find a strange supermarket and it costs the earth. Like, you know, you do it all, you're in. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, this is tricky. Because like once you've bought the stuff and printed it off and you actually have to do it. You know what I mean? yeah. yeah. And then you get to a point where you're like, this sucks. The thing that like three steps ago was the solution and the savior and yes, now sucks. You know what I mean? And from here, you can go back to what can fix me. You can be like, oh yeah, no, this is not the thing. I'm going to look for the next thing. Or if you're persistent, you can go through, you can keep slogging away and you're like, oh, I suck. Mm. And this is, is an awful place to be. It's actually also a good place. I get excited and people look at me like, Suzanne, you're crazy. But from here is where you can pivot into the success cycle, which I'll talk about next. But many of us don't. We start stepping into this. And I use a lot of um, movie metaphors. So if you're familiar with the Shawshank Redemption and mm. Andy with his little rock hammer, you can be like, this is the point where you're like, no, I'm going to put the poster back up and stay in prison. I can't, you know, or you can keep digging away. Because if you keep at it, and success actually starts from I suck, you know, hmm. because this is the point where you realize the answer isn't in the next program, the next thing, the, the, the African mango, the organic kale, do you know what I mean? The answer is in me. And you just keep taking imperfect action. Um, this also cycle is very relevant to business as well. So it's, yeah. it's a model you can use for many things. Mm -hmm. um, you just keep showing up. You just keep doing something. Um, and, you know, the way out is through, so to speak. And then you acknowledge the progress that you're making. So often we, we, we want to be over here. Like we want to be not having any coffee, ne never eating chocolate again, um, subsiding on like enjoying kale. Um, I'm sorry, I'm a weight loss coach, but kale still tastes like I'd rather be fat, if I'm honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, we acknowledge the, not only the things we do, as in the little steps each day, but the things we didn't do as in like, I used to slam a whole family block of chocolate and now I have half. That's progress. You mm -hmm. know, it doesn't yeah. have to be this all or nothing on off kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So if you put it all together, it's like an infinity symbol. Um, mm -hmm. As in sometimes, you know, we're looking for a cure. Well, first of all, you're not broken, but this goes around and comes around again. Like you may nail this one habit and like, you know, I get up every morning and I go for a walk or, I drink lemon water or, or whatever it is, but there's other things. There's more steps. There's deeper. And for many of us with weight, weight actually isn't the root cause. It's the surface thing. It's like the physical representation of a, a mental and spiritual and stuff. So it can be like really scary, but it's going around. And in any moment, it, like if you're having this thing where you're like, I just need to find the next program, the next course, as I said, business weight, same sort of thing. If you take a breath there and go, oh, am I in an I suck face? Like I'm already doing this. I've got my rock hammer. Just be patient. Just keep taking action. Keep going because I'm making progress and you can slip back up into the top. Mm. Ah, I see. So the I suck phase isn't something that it's not like you want people to get there. It's more like if you find yourself there, then it's time to yeah. move the, into I, I suck action. phase feels like rock bottom it feels like it's failure it feels like i'm one step from giving up but it's actually a, a pivot into the like if you can sit with that feeling and i know it's uncomfortable and we don't want to and that's why many of us eat to push it down to ignore it to to hide it but if we can sit with it like don't live there you know what I mean? but sit with it and go okay this isn't working out how i thought the results aren't coming fast enough but, you know, I can celebrate the fact that I, you know, I'm tracking my habits or I'm making this a priority or I'm still in the room, you know, just the little things enough to keep going. Mm. And speaking, of, yeah, and, great, great. And speaking of habits, you know, there's this, there's this wonderful, 
I guess, analogy or tool or way of thinking about it, which is the compound interest idea. And <laughs> Sorry, I, Lafayette is coming up on one of my slides. But yes. yes, I wanted you to share that too. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'll, I'll jump back in. There's not much to go. Um, share. So has this come back up, George, to say the struggle cycle? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're likely on the struggle cycle. If you're kind of a bit, I'm getting there, Suze, I don't quite understand it. Um, if you're trying to change everything at once and you do all the things and then no things. So you clean out the pantry, you join up the gym, you say you're going to go five times, you, you know, swear off coffee, you do everything and then burn out, get overwhelmed and do nothing. That's a sign of the struggle cycle. If you focus on the gap between where you are now and where you want to be, because often like for me, um, 78 kilograms, 170 pounds is a long way, you know? And at mm -hmm. the beginning, there was many things I couldn't do that I can do now, but it's focusing on that very next step. As I said, if you want to give up something entirely, like I wouldn't recommend that I still quite like chocolate and stuff, but some people do want to. But like, to be honest, I used to eat two family blocks a day. I don't know what you call them in the US, but like big blocks of chocolate cutting that back to one and a half to one, it was all progress because when we go all chocolate, no chocolate, it does terrible things to our hormones, to our, um, like all the, I go on about that as well. But like focus, you know, if you're focusing on, it, it's got to be there or here, that's a sign that you're on the struggle cycle. We compare our start to other people's successes. I'm not saying don't get inspired by before and afters. I'm not saying don't look up to somebody but you don't know how long they've been working at this. And sometimes, you know, both in business and in weight, we, it's sensationalized in the magazines or the articles, like, you know, drop a dress size in five days, get to six figures in a month or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And some people may do that, like the unicorns, but then the magazines don't show after the after, like what's their month like after they've made six figures? What's their right. size like after the Christmas, you know? Right. Yeah. And we get overwhelmed and frustrated because we're not there yet. And in the moment, like um, Tim Tams is my favorite. And I don't think you have them over there. They're like a chocolate biscuit. If I want to eat a chocolate, a chocolate biscuit, if I say no, I don't magically drop five kilos in that moment. But if I say yes, I feel better if only for a short period of time. So that's the sign that you're on the struggle. And ways to transition into the success um, is this dream big, act small and imperfectly, mm. change one habit consistently. And I'll go into that on the next slide with the compound interest and celebrate every small step, not just the ones you take, but the ones that you, you, you're you not taking anymore. Like I used to drink eight cups of coffee a day and now I drink seven. It all counts. And then this little um, mantra that I use is intention plus attention equals outcome. Often we have the intention. We buy all the food, we clean out the pantry, we print out the stuff. Um, but we don't actually take the stuff. We don't sit down and put it into our diary. We don't give it the attention. We go, I'm going to work out five times this week. And suddenly it's Friday and you're like, oh crap, does five times today count? Do you know what I mean? Like the attention doesn't mean 24 seven, this takes over your entire life. Cause we have responsibilities, children, family, work, obligations, but this is important too. And I love in your teachings, George, and you're saying like put the self care stuff in first and the rest and the naps and all that first, because both of these together bring you the outcome. So this is the compound interest bit. I was excited because you mentioned it and you hadn't seen this. So um, these are my progress photos. So at the beginning, it was slow. If you look at the dates on these, like June to September to December, you don't notice a big lot of difference. And the thing is with changing one habit at a time, as opposed to traditional diets where you change everything, yeah, you do drop a buttload of weight really fast, but then you get burnt out, overwhelmed, and then you gain it all back. When you change one habit at a time, the, the results are slow to start with, but you have this positive compound interest over time because as you add in new habits, the original habits you established are still taking effect as you add in the next ones. So your results actually speed up. It's a matter of having that trust and self-belief to stick with it long enough to see. At the end there, I will um, be honest, between March and August there, I had a tummy tuck. Um, so, you know, that's, <laughs> I don't want people to think, oh my God, you know, um, because I had a lot of skin and that was really uncomfortable. Um, but, you know, you can still see like here at the end, there's not a lot of weight difference between these three photos at all. I think it's five kilograms, um, which would be, I don't know, eight or nine pounds. But it's those habits and still taking effect, all the things that you're doing. 
and it becomes your new way of being. And I've said it many a time, but I'll say it again, celebrate frequently. Because a lot of us will be like, I'll celebrate when I get to my goal weight, when I've made six figures, when I've done all that. But every little thing, every new move you can do in a yoga class, every new um, exercise that you try, like pole dancing was my dream. I never would have done it at the beginning because just no, you know. Um, celebrate everything because it's powerful. Mm. I think I've got, I've got one or two more. Um, and, and when I say this, I don't want to make people think it's not going to be effort. Like when I say just change one thing and whatever, it is going to take effort and you're worth it. You know, before and afters, they rarely show the messy middle. Um, we just think, oh, there's something I'm missing or something wrong with me because it wasn't that simple a journey for me, which is why I always say I have ups and downs. Um, and, and don't compare ourselves to not just other people, but previous versions of ourselves. Because we can be like, when I left high school, I was able to run 10Ks easily. Not me, clients. I've never been a runner. <laughs> Do you know? yeah. Or before I had kids or whatever. That body, you don't want to get back to where you were before because that body, that version of you gained weight. You want to create a new way of being and, and accept where you are now. If you used to run 10Ks or miles, um, I know you guys measure miles, and you suddenly go and, and do that, not only are you likely to get down on yourself, you're probably going to do an injury. You know, mm-hmm. So really assess where you are now, have an honest and real conversation with yourself. What can you do today? So nearly done. In any moment, you can make the decision to change your life. Why wait? And I really love for anyone watching this to share in the um, chat box your takeaway, the takeaway that will bring you closer to your goals. I don't know if you have takeaway in the US, if you call it that, but um, yeah. it's like fast food here. So I was like, there can be positive takeaways. And by sharing it, not only do you, um, when you have to summarize something in your own language, it helps you implement it, but also sometimes someone else may read your share and it's inspiring for them. So it's never just about learning from the person. Learning from each other is really, really powerful. Yeah. And yeah, that's why I had thanks <laughs> That was amazing. Yeah. So um, you've worked with a lot of people uh, on, on th- this mindset change and you've shared your story. Um, can you think of a kind of a client that you've worked with for whom this, this kind of change has also resulted in, in a physical change? Yeah, m- many. Um, the, there's one client for many of my clients, they're also entrepreneurs. Um, and they hold themselves back showing up in business, doing video, going to networking events, having photos taken um, because of their weight. They feel, you know, embarrassed or they feel uncomfortable um, and they don't fully show up themselves. So there was one client who came to me and we had this big discussion and she just knew that diets and exercise wasn't the way. She knew there was something deeper going on um, but wasn't sure what that, what that is. And we worked together um, one-on-one for six months and now she's in my membership program. Um, and it's, it's really about like, what's, what's the, what's the deeper thing that's happening here? Like, is it really about the weight? Cause sometimes the weight is the easier excuse. Cause it'll be like, Oh, I'll do that when I've lost weight, you know? And then for her, it was like, I'll get the photos taken when I've lost weight. So she was holding herself back from losing weight because she didn't really want the photos because she had this, like visibility I suppose it would be fear or something like that um so it's kind of like working through that and sometimes too it would be like I won't have the photos done because then I'll lose weight and then I can't use them and just the little stories that we we tell ourselves and um yeah we worked together for six months in that time she released you know 15 kilograms and that's I, I don't usually share numbers like she's happy for me too but it's not about that it's about the deeper understanding and not only did she get all her photos done rebrand do whatever put her prices up she's just like like now that that fear has been addressed and she's still got a little way she wants to go but you just you can see in the energy in the way she turns up in in somebody's like vibrance when they're like not like oh when and and when because if you put it off to i get to a certain number on scales or a clothing size when you get there if you still don't have the confidence or the self-belief or the thing you thought you'd have, you just put the goalpost back. Oh, I just need to drop five more kilos. Oh, I need to get toned. Do you know what I mean? And you know, that's a pattern for the people I work with. They're underlying it, it's it's not actually about the weight at all. But you know, you have to come to that realization on, on your own. 
I love that you, uh, you know, people come to you for the physical, you know, weight, weight release, et cetera. But the way that you coach them is about the mindset and their, and their day-to-day actions. And I think the result of that, not surprisingly, it, it not only helps with their health and their weight, but it helps with everything else as well. And yes. Because that's, you know, we change from within. So thank you for um, kind of anchoring that transformation from self-empowerment, essentially. Um, so how can people work with you? Those who are watching this, um, you, have, you have ways of working with you that are either one-to-one. Yes. And you, you, you know, when you do one-to-one, you have a membership program. Yes. You have online courses. Yes. And you also have a newsletter. A, a newsletter. Kind of newsletter. But tell us uh, about, maybe tell us a bit about each one. So the one-on-one, how do, how does, how do people work with you one-to-one? Uh, working with me one-to-one, it's, it's very bespoke. I don't have the Suzanne method because, as I said, everybody's body is different. A lot of people benefit from a weekly check-in, like an accountability call, where we call it the Sue shoulder shake with love, not like, you know, have you done the things? Because nobody likes that. But it's like, what did you plan to do last week and how did you go? And what did you plan to do next week? And, and we set it up because it's just that, that touch point and that checking in. And then because weight is really heavy, no pun intended, but it's emotional and it can bring up all your stuff and it can be easy to kind of just kind of like, flow to or try if you work with me one-on-one you don't get away (laughs) but to just when things are going pear-shaped to run away and that's when you need the support the most because there's never any judgment anyway I could talk about these pages anyway um short calls like that every week and then based on that longer calls um I do hypnosis I do NLP as I said um uncovering timelines limiting beliefs depending on what the person needs so it's very bespoke some and and then another reason is when you're rolling, you probably don't need to see me so much. You can kind of be on your own. And when you're having a hard time, we have more. So I don't have a set, you get this many hours, this kind of package. It's, you know, oh, it's great. built with the person. Yeah. I don't have a lot of availability for one-on-one because um, I'm only one person. Um, and then my group, it's called Why Wait? And it's got the infinity, like from the thing. I'm really excited about it all lining up. And technically, weight is in weight on your body but the reason it's an infinity is why weight because these habits can be in any anything i actually have a few people in my membership who didn't want to drop weight uh, more about doing things sustainably um continually all that sort of stuff we meet four times a month as a group um live with varying time zones because i'm in australia and i have people in the us and people in the uk um, and they're all recorded so if you can't come live you can watch them you can ask questions beforehand we have a really super active facebook group the only one i've seen just as active as your master heart george because one of my pet peeves is an active facebook group is a promo and i get there it's tumbleweeds but anyway um and it's really supportive and we have fun it doesn't have to be dreary we have a scavenger hunt every month where you've got little things that you do um it's all voluntary and then i send a prize to somebody who who's completed it um yeah i, I like to make it fun And then my short courses, I just finished up my first one called Reboot Your Resolve. It was really good. We had a blast. And they're available as home study. So um, I'm going to be aiming to do one every month or two. Mum life, it depends. But you can purchase any of them as the recording afterwards. And then if if you just want to, like, suss me out and see if you you like my vibe, I get it. My newsletter goes out um, genuinely once a week. And I have some form of... um, tip update thing something that's i just share in my newsletter because i don't like ones that are just i'm oh, sorry i shouldn't say that <laughs> but i don't like ones that are just go read my blog so i do like to give something juicy for people for, for signing up for it and um yeah and there's some special offers and stuff from time to time in there cool uh-huh. very good so i'm gonna have the links uh in the notes of the video so if you liked what you saw here today please do check out one of suzanne's offerings some of you are saying you know what i just want to work one-on-one with Suzanne, that's great. Contact her about her availability. Uh, if not, maybe join her program or check out her uh, her short course. Uh, and definitely, if you want kind of ongoing inspiration and motivation and, and tips, um, check out Suzanne's newsletter. So I'll have those all in there. Um, thank you so much, Suzanne. Is there any kind of uh, send off you want to share with us in, in terms of our how we can you know, be better in our meeting our goals? Just be, it starts with kindness, being really kind to ourselves. Because when we are feeling that stress and overwhelm, we're tending to want to eat because 
I could start a whole thing on that, but because sometimes guilt is easier to deal with than disappointment and that sort of stuff. So um, starts with kindness, awareness, when you realize you're doing it, it feels like you're taking a step backward, but awareness is key to be able to shift from that struggle into success and just keep going. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction any day. Mm, awesome. Thank you so much, Suzanne. Appreciate your time today. Thanks, George.